The City of Menasha is pleased to present video recordings of City Council and City Committee meetings. Menasha residents and interested parties can get information about City meetings, meeting agendas, and other documents from the City website. www.menashawi.gov Expression of opinions regarding City of Menasha issues or about these broadcasts can be made by contacting the Mayor's Office, 920-967-3608. Contacting their City Alderman. Contact information appears on the City website. Or by completing the electronic feedback form on the City website. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited. Good evening. I'd like to call the City of Menasha Common Council meeting to order. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we could have the roll, please. Alderman Lewis? Here. Alderman Tom Grotty? Here. Alderman Ted Grotty? Here. Alderman Rapella? Here. Alderman Nichols? Here. Alderman Eisenach? Here. Alderman Sebnick? Here. Alderman Hammond? Here. All are present. Thank you. The first item on the agenda this evening is a public hearing, and it's regarding the 2024 proposed City of Menasha budget. Uh, Director Sassman, would you like to comment on the public hearing notice? Sure. Um, so tonight, I'll sit here, right? um, we'll be approving our 2024 budget. Um, prior to this evening, we had four um, budget review sessions. All of those are public meetings, and that gave all departments an opportunity to present their budgets to the council. And then we did hold a five-year capital improvement plan workshop back in August as well which gave departments an opportunity to present their capital items um, also in advance of the budget. <clears throat> um, for this budget, we did have um, additional state revenues to work with, which provided us an opportunity to move a number of items that we had pushed off into borrowing um, the last couple of years. Um, so bringing that back into the general fund, those things were um, police vehicles, um, a road project, as well as the street um, crack ceiling project as well. Um, later on tonight, we have three um, standard resolutions that we approve all in relation to the budget. R25-23, that's the resolution that levies the taxes and then it allows us to set our mill rate for each of the taxing entities and then authorizes us to prepare the tax roll. Resolution 26, that's the resolution that adopts all of the budgets um, for all city funds for the 2024 year. And then resolution 27, um, that resolution sets forth the amount that we plan to borrow for our capital projects. Um, obviously when it comes time to borrowing, that amount will change, but it is important to have that resolution in place um, for when we do come time to borrow and then that'll be brought back again at a later date. Um, the 2024 budget um, as proposed right now does have a tax levy increase of $326,000 and $449, which is an increase of 2.91%. And just for comparison purposes, our 2023 budget had a levy increase of just under $582,000 a 5.47% increase. Uh, the state does impose a, a levy limit on municipalities. So for this year's, for the 2024 budget, we were allowed to increase our levy by $176,083. Um, however, we're also proposing to add uh, an additional $150,000 onto that um, because we have a joint fire department, we can 
um, add that onto our levy if they increased um, expenditures for the year. So those two amounts together are where we're getting our tax levy increase of a 326,449. Um, right now, as the budget stands, we only have the capacity, the increase, 326,449 is the amount of our increase to the levy. All right, thank you. Yep. And right now as the budget stands, we have the capacity to only add $634 onto our levy. So if we were looking to add anything, we would have to um, cut our budget um, to do that. And then as far as where the proposed tax rates are right now, the assessed tax rates for Winnebago County it's 8.89, which is an increase of 34 cents from last year, and Calumet County would be $8.91, which is an increase of 19 cents from last year. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment on the budget this evening? Okay, seeing no one, we will call the public hearing to a close. And we'll move forward with the report of department heads, staff, and consultants. We have the minutes and communications this evening. Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like for us to receive minutes A through D in communications E and F. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? The motion carries. Item F is public comments on any matter of concern to the city. Anyone from the public want to comment on anything else? Seeing no one, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. If it's all right with the council, I'd like to take each item separately. So at this time, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes of the Common Council of 11 6 -23. Is there a second? So motion and a second. I don't know who you chose. Alderman Grady. Any dis oh, Alderman Rapella. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item two is the budget review sessions. Do we have a motion? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. I also would like for us to approve the minutes from our budget review session of 11 1, 11 2, 11 8, and 11 9. And when I'm saying 11, that means um, November. <laughs> so, motion is second by Alderman Grady. And just shows that we were quite busy, whether um, people realize it or not, but we spent a lot of time on the, on the budget. Other discussion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. There was just a minor correction that I filed with the clerk before this evening's meeting. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, is um, all those in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Item two is, uh, well, the second item two is the Board of Public Works recommendations. Do we have a motion? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. The Board of uh, Public Works is recommending that we do the street use application for gather around. Uh, this is Thursday, December 7th. This is where we light up the holiday tree on December 7th from 2 to 7. And this is um, the a Menasha Park and Recreation Department um, function. So motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Don't worry, he's working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'll just wait no, here. No, I, I got that part down, okay. thanks. <laughs> right. There it goes. Okay, Motion carries 8 0. Item 3 is a change order. Do we have a motion, Alderman Sevenick? Yep, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Board of Pu Public Works has recommended a change order to Don Hippis and Son Construction 
Incorporated MCM 09-220035 uh, for 2023. This is our sanitary sewer and water main reconstruction. This is an addition of $8,100. Is there a second? There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8 0. Do we have a motion for item 4? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. Um, for the public, they're wondering why there's little or no discussion on these particular items. It's because they were run through committee and um, they were recommended by the Board of Public Works, and we've uh, had our discussions there. So at this time, uh, we are making a, we would like to make a payment to Don Hippus and Sons Construction. Incorporated MCM 09-2200335. This again is for the 2023 sanitary sewer and main construction. This amount for reconstruction and this amount is for $60,354.45. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no more discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. My light was on. I thought you'd go if you wanted to kidding. discuss. <laughs> oh, now you didn't vote, Stan. <laughs> After all that. Motion carries 8-0. Item I is action items. The first is the accounts payable and payroll. Do we have a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve the accounts payable and payroll for the term of November 3rd through November 16th, 2023, in the amount of $1,192,366.59. There's a motion, a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries, 8-0. Item K is ordinances and resolutions. There are three resolutions, as Director Sassman had spoke about, regarding the budget, resolution 25, 26, and 27. Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like, especially for discussion, um, and this is the moment where if, if we want to make any changes to our budgets, we can do that, uh, because it will affect uh, potentially the, the levy. Um, so at this time, I'll move for R2523. This resolution will levy the taxes for the purpose of paying the operating expenses for the year 2024 for the city of Menasha. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Nichols. Is there discussion, Alderman Sevenick? Thank you. So I kind of want to go over sort of what Jennifer just did for us for a little basic understanding better of this budget. Um, I'll put it in stand terms. Maybe it's easier to understand. Because <laughs> Jennifer is such a professional and numbers fly out and uh, makes things a little more difficult. But uh, I think the, the most important thing, first of all, to understand about this budget is the size of it. A lot of people, that's the first question they ask me, how big is that budget? So we're roughly twice the size of just a few years ago, and that is $58 million. And as Jennifer indicated, the tax levy is up 2.91%. The mayor did a very good job and his staff on this budget. Because if you, I know for years, when we looked at our tax rate, we wanted to get below that $10, $9 mark. And we are now at, in Winnebago County, $8.89. Even though that is 34 cents higher than last year, we're still maintaining it a good level. And for Randy in your district, 
Of course, it's $8.91, which is a little higher, but it's only a 19% or 19 cents increase from the year before. So the other thing that should be noted is that spending for this, year, this year's budget is up a million dollars. That's quite a bit. And as Jennifer stated before, just under 800,000 is additional shared revenues that we receive from the state of Wisconsin. Um, that's good news. And I mainly credit that to our governor. He has always been there for Menasha. He has always been there for cities, villages, townships, and counties. Um, that isn't always the case on the other side. And then of course, we have such a great public works department that um, I know that, for instance, we're working with the state to do Racine Street. I drove here on Racine Street, very slow. It's a terrible street. And just to give you a little perspective on that, I joked with Laura before, but being on this council for a number of years, I remember when I was told it'll be done in 2021. It will be done in 2022. You know, it just continued. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean 21, I meant 01. So it's been years and years and years and it got pushed and pushed and pushed and it's finally gonna uh, come to, uh, to be a beautiful street. I remember that street when it was done as a kid and they planted those trees, those cr crab apples and someone went down the line and busted them all. And there are still some that survived. So, and I, I don't know how long ago that was. Um, but that was before I was born. Before you were born and I would say half the council. <laughs> but I know that Ted was around, Randy was around, and Tom was around. Crab apples were in the 70s. I so. that for sure. Mr. Herziger did that. Yeah. So, um, as, as uh, Jennifer stated before, the last year we did something that you don't routinely do and that we borrowed for certain things. Um, I bit my tongue a little bit. I want what's best for Menasha and I'm glad to see that we're finally going to pay back for those things. As she had mentioned, they were like the crack seal, the police cars, those kind of things. The, Debt on the tax levy was 130,000. Uh, the that borrowing was 340,000, and then of course I'm going to bring up the salary study was part of that. The salary study was 25,000, and what's added to this budget is 280,000 dollars because of that study. I know the city attorney while she gave her presentation, thanked the council for the support. I have to say that it didn't come from me. <laughs> it did not come from Randy and it did not come from Rosita. I think almost $300,000 and if you wanna really look at it, just because it's 280, remember we spent 25,000 on a study that doesn't come to me like this. That's what I was expecting, and that's not what we got. We got a, uh, an organization that looked into things and then discussed them with us uh, and told us and made recommendations. Um, I wasn't completely happy about that. The nice thing, and I think Jennifer and the mayor have been working on this for years, is, the, is to increase the general fund. And Menasha will the reserve just yes the general fund reserve oh, yes excuse me general fund reserve the mayor is absolutely right um, yeah I didn't write that um, we're going to have a difficult time if we ever have to go out 
on the market to try to purchase or borrow because of our bond rating, because of the steam plant. Nothing that we did as a council, no one here was, was involved at all other than the mayor uh, on the steam utility. Um, that, that has hurt the city, but you know, Mayor, I give you credit for helping to reduce that over time and um, the city is on better footing because of it. But remember, this was a utility thing. It wasn't a city of government thing, a city of Menasha thing that uh, had hurt, hurt us. So our last year's levy amount was 11,402,000 ,000 and some change. And as Jennifer stated, I believe you said it was up $176,000. So our proposed levy then is $11,552,000. As she had stated and we, as we discussed during budget time, we can't even add anything to this budget if we wanted to. I've had a few people that have already asked me that. I'm like, we can't even go over $600. That's how tight this budget is. That's how strong this budget is. And I know that the mayor had sleepless nights because he called me a few times about how difficult it had been for him and, and his staff working on this budget. I could nick pick here and there, which I might still do, because I know if we don't, we're gonna be, told that we didn't do anything, but we did educate ourselves on this budget. We uh, went through step by step and the department heads did an excellent job. All those that proposed their budgets to us and gave their, their reasons. So as an alderman, it's believed that our job is to try to reduce the tax rate. That's not always true. I think our job is to provide the best kind of services for the types of dollars um, that we have to ask our citizens to give us. I will say this, and again, I thank our governor because we received $2,074,000 to do Water Street. And I had been involved with that Water Street project for many years. And never, even though I went to all these meetings, I had a grumpy attitude sitting there saying to myself, this ain't ever gonna happen. We don't have that kind of money. But because the governor helped us and, and our staff and those we hired to provide a great application, um, we received those funds. Uh, I know Laura's uh, brought in some money for us for street lights. I think it was something around $140,000, $150,000. So I'd have to say of all the years that I've been up here, this, this past year, we've, done an excellent job of getting grant dollars. As the mayor has stated before, it's hard, we can't really grow out anymore. We're landlocked, that's tough. But we can grow up, which we've been doing. And I thank community development for their work in that area and this council for, for continually, despite many setbacks, through the projects that have happened through this community to stick to our guns and support those developers that needed our help. So with that, I'm gonna, I see a few other lights on and I'm gonna let them talk. I do have some small cuts, but I'm almost, it's not even gonna affect the budget whatsoever or your taxes. So I'm wondering if I should even do them, so. Uh, Mayor, good job. Staff, good job with your budget this year. And um, I think the people of Menasha should be happy with uh, what we propose. 
but I do want to remind them of one thing. When you look at your taxes, look at the governments that are on there and who's done what. And for years, there have been years where it was 2%, 1% increased by us. The increases came from other entities, other governments. But yet, we send out the tax bill, they get it, we get the blame. So please, when you get your tax bill, look at it and realize that we worked hard up here to provide good services to this community. Um, a lot of bang for, for the buck that we ask for. Alderman Grady. Thank you, Mayor. I too will comment on the, the budget. I won't be as long-winded as <laughs> President <laughs> winded as oh, President Council Stan Sepanek, but he makes excellent points. Prior to the budgeting on the 1st of November, where I think our first meeting was, the mayor had a slide where he sat down with the department heads after they gave him this budget and cut, you know, some, some $400,000 right there. So it's, it's kind of hard for us to find stuff in there when it's mainly salaries and fringes. I think the main thing is, because we have very good department heads. We have a very strong staff here over the last years that we have here. We have a retired uh, uh, chief officer, a fire chief leaving. Kevin's done a super job combining the Nina and Asha fire departments together. We had our first budget by our chief of police, Thorne, and he did a super job too. And, and our protection system is just awesome here in, in the city of Menasha and Nina. So I wanna thank the staff members, the budget people, and really the department heads for what they do and the people that they hire because they're the ones ans answering the questions the first and third Monday of every month when we come with our questions about things. And they find alternate ways to do things. Uh, one time, Deputy Director Thad Brown, he, he did some stuff for the fire the police department to help save some money. They're always doing something. And the 600 some dollars we have left, I mean, if they wouldn't do these things, we'd be over. So hats off to that. And I do, or I, I do support, I do, did support the salary study. And I think it was something that needed to be done to get ourselves in line with other communities because we don't want to lose these people that we do have. And I think even though it was close to $280,000, I think it's gonna be worth the, I think it was 30,000 that we spent, Stan, so on that. There were some other things that were the, the opt out of the insurance policies where we gave the individuals if they wanted to do that. And that saved a lot of money for the city too. So we're always looking to do the best we can. I won't cut a penny from this budget and it, because as Alderman Sevenick said, there's a little bit here and there you can do, but it's just not worth it for all the effort and time that our department has put into what they do do. I'm not going to cut a couple thousand dollars here and there because of what the mayor did and his staff did to cut close to 400,000. So I do appreciate everything you've done for us and looking forward to working with you again in, in 2024. Alderman Rapello. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, geez, uh, interesting follow up here, but I was just taking a look at uh, one of our neighboring communities and I don't real feel comfortable putting Donna on the spot, but um, I looked at this one neighboring community and I noticed with Jennifer giving us our stats of $8.89 and $8.91 for Calumet County. And I thought, oh, great, we're below $9, okay? But then I, I, I happened to, to see this article in the paper, the post crescent, some of you, the, the printed copy, which is rare to find these days. Um, we had a neighboring community only having a $6.57 uh, increase in valuation. 
So, uh, and their taxes decreased 24%. And so I thought, holy cow, um, ours did go up and they decreased 24.7%. Uh, I'm a little concerned how that uh, entity was able to decrease and we were able to increase. Um, so uh, I can help you a little bit with that. All right, thank you. I was hoping you'd enlighten us <laughs> because other people would see that in, so, in the paper. So there's a couple things going on. Both Appleton and Nina did a reevaluation last year. And if you looked at last year's assessed rates, they were probably close to a dollar more than ours. But the equalized and assessed values were much less. So all their property values grew this year. Ours all stayed the same. So if you look at equalized rates, Nina's at 657, correct? Yes. yes. Uh, Appleton's at 666, Menasha's at 728, Kakana's at 819, and Oshkosh is at 870. So we're pretty much smack dab in the middle. But then you also have to remember that we do not have a transportation utility. Correct. So you've got 50 bucks or so on those, and we also don't have ref refuse and recycling fees here. Correct. But we have five dollars. Kakana's at sixty, Appleton's at fifty-two, and Nina's at forty-two. Yep. So if we would put those things into, take those out of our assessed rates, like uh, we would probably be pretty close. I don't have that number okay. here. And then we're also about four hundred dollars less on our electric bills per year. Okay. So we are coming in fairly close to our neighboring communities, and that's always been my goal to be Nina Menasha Appleton being similar. We provide similar services, um, and I think we're pretty much there. Okay. Five, eight years ago, we were not pretty much there. We were significantly higher than our neighbors, and that was mainly due to debt service, and we paid most of that down. The other thing that Nina did to pull a rabbit out of its head is they closed two TIF districts this year, and that pushes your tax rate down fairly significantly. Okay. So that was how they um, were able to create that much lower tax rate this year than last year. Thank you very much. I hope the, the public understood that and uh, Dodd did a nice job explaining that. I just didn't want people to compare just those two numbers going, holy cow. Wait till they get their school tax. Well, we have no control. That's the runaway train. Um, but um, yeah, so um, yeah, Nina you know, will get affected too. So thank you very much. Um, one other, couple other things, yeah, is as far as Stan and Ted have uh, mentioned earlier, there's a, a few nitpicky things that we could cut. There's a few things that I, I think are uh, maybe overzealous as far as uh, some of the departments have uh, put down in their budget, but uh, they would cut off a mere penny or two pennies on some of these houses and that really doesn't affect a whole bunch. Um, we did look at fireworks. Uh, we do have a, a two-year contract with them so we have a contract for this up the, the season of 20, the summer of 2024. We have a contract already under in place, correct Don? So we wouldn't be delving into that till next year, November, as far as what we would like to uh, contribute for the fireworks, if we'd like to increase, decrease, or what we would like to do. But So now it's kind of a moot factor. So uh, again, uh, thank you for Don for uh, working hard to make some cuts on this budget and also all the department heads and the workers uh, that we have. Um, so thank you very much and uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you again Don for your good sure. explanation. So there's two things I've always said you don't mess with in the budget. I told Alderman Rapello this this afternoon. Snow plowing and fireworks are the two things that you do not mess with in the budget. And I never mess with either of the above. Alderman Sepnick. I'd like to make a motion to cut sure, fireworks by <laughs> I actually agree with Randy on that. I think uh, it's over budgeted by, uh, I think, uh, by at least $5,000. But um, I wanted to ask Jennifer, um, after what Randy had said, you know, I can make a motion maybe 
save us 10,000, he might have 2,000. That has no effect on that, uh, that uh, tax rate because you'd have to cut out about 100,000 just for it to be like a penny, right? What, what, I mean, it used to be that, so what is it now, roughly? I think she's trying to get on there. There you go. There we go. Um, so yeah, just to put it in perspective, we would have to reduce our tax levy by about 125,000 yeah, to take 10 cents off of the tax rate. Um, so just to put that in perspective. All right. So what would that be to, to reduce it by a penny? <laughs> 12, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah. I, have, I have three. But I'm not, like I said, they're not, it's not going to make a difference unless the body has others. So with that, Mayor. Uh, well, we do have one for the stormwater budget that we needed to add for the Little Lake project that was approved last meeting. And I'm not sure if Alderman Nichols had wanted to comment or if. All I can see is your hands moving. I can't see if you're trying to press button or not. Okay. So are you talking about the 5,500? Yes. Is this where you want the, is this an amendment? Here? This would be an amendment right. to the stormwater utility budget, yes. All right, then, Mayor. Um, we had discussed this in the Board of Public Works. Randy, we discussed this in the Board of Public Works. Yes. And so at this time, I'd like to make a motion to add an additional 5,550 to account number 625-1010-541-2. Oh, you have it up there already? Yeah. Uh, Jennifer, did I uh, just give him bad advice? In the storm water utility fund, is this where we do this? Yes. It's, is this the next one, Jen? I'm sorry, I just gave you bad yeah, advice. Yeah, yeah, so uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's, I gave you bad advice. That's why I thought it was uh, later on, too. So It's okay. in Resolution 26. Well, this does take, I mean, this does set the, well, whatever. Okay, it. so Resolution 25 sets the general fund tax levy. Um, further discussion by anyone? So we have a motion, and I don't remember who the second was. Alderman Nichols. And seeing that we have no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote. Motion carries 8 0. Thank you, everyone, for your support on the budget this year. Item 2 is Resolution 26. Alderman Sevener. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move for R2623, a resolution of the City of Menasha adopting the general. Special revenues for uh, 2024 budgets. Uh, did I skip over? Yeah, capital projects, debt service, enterprise, and uh, internal service fund and component unit. Second. So motion is second. By and I have an Nichols. amendment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> and if you'd like to make the amendment. Yes. Yeah, so over the. Um, last Friday, what was it, Thursday, uh, I and Laura talked and um, we knew that we'd have to add this, so uh, I made a copy and then she kindly made me a copy, but anyways, <laughs> uh, I made, uh, I'd like to make a motion as an amendment to add $5,550 $5, to account 625-1010-541.2 21-02 in the storm water utility fund for the Little Lake Butamore comprehensive plan. Second. So motion a second for the amendment. Does anyone have discussion on the amendment? Yes. Go ahead, Stan. Um, I'd like for, because there were members that weren't at that meeting, if Laura, if you would take a, a few moments just to you know, go over why we decided to do this. So just to give a little background, uh, we did have 
the city of Nina is looking at doing, I believe it was city of Nina, right? Sam may be able to speak to this a bit better just because he was involved in those meetings, but they're the driver of a study for anybody that touches Little Lake Butamore um, to look at water quality. So this would be a comprehensive plan, first, very first stage study to kind of analyze the water body and determine how we could proceed each entity as a whole. Um, they believe that our voices together could do more than independently municipality-wise. So this is just the first phase of this comprehensive plan, um, potentially for more phases in the future, should, should anything come to fruition with that. Thank you. So we would like to be a party to that, as is Fox Crossing, um, Winnebago County, and City of Nina. And with that, Mayor, I would like to say, please stop raking your leaves in the road. <laughs> Any other discussion on the amendment, Alderman Grady? Yes, I, my question is that, is the 5550 enough? I thought there was another 600 some dollar. There was seven something, some odd something. in kind, that's for staff time. Oh. So I, it's purely it staff doesn't time. Doesn't have to be added to this, okay. Correct. All right, thank you. Seeing no other discussion, this is just on the amendment. If we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8-0. So then we have the original resolution 26 as amended on the floor, unless there's any other amendments. Have any other discussion or amendments? Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to point out that the current resolution that you have already has the 5,550 reflected in it, so it does not need to be modified. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> After we went through all that. <laughs> Based on the motion from the last meeting. <laughs> okay. Seeing no further discussion, then we'll take a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8-0. Item three is resolution 27, and this is our general obligation borrowing that's connected with the 2024 budget. Alderman Sevenick. Yes, thank you, Mayor. As Jennifer indicated, this will be coming back to the council in 2024 when we um, get these numbers more to our needs. So at this time, I'd like for us to move for R2723. This resolution authorizes the 2024 general obligation borrowing and the issuance of certificate of indebtedness and levying a tax in connection within second. or therewith. <laughs> There's a motion, a second. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries, 8-0. Item L is appointments, and it's really one appointment. It's the resignation of Gail Pop and then the appointment of Stacy Milligan to that same post. Um, if anyone would like to make that motion together. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Move to accept the notice of resignation from Gail Pop from the Redevelopment Authority and the mayor's appointment of Stacy Milligan to the Redevelopment Authority for the term effective November 20th, 2023 through September 1st, 2026. So there is a second. Second. It's a motion is second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion carries. Item N is public comments. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak? Seeing no one, I would accept a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. The City of Menasha is pleased to present video recordings of City Council and City Committee meetings. Menasha residents and interested parties can get information about city meetings, 
meeting agendas, and other documents from the City website, www.manashawi.gov. Expression of opinions regarding City of Manasha issues or about these broadcasts can be made by contacting the Mayor's Office, 920-967-3608. Contacting their City Alderman. Contact information appears on the City website. Or by completing the electronic feedback form on the City website. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited.